Hi, my name is Justin. I'm the developer of Pur Rocket, an iOS space game with cats. And I listen to the One Off Gaming podcast. You can find a link to download my game at facebook.com slash purrocket. Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming Podcast. Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming Podcast. Welcome to our podcast, we've got a lot to say about all the latest games you're gonna want to play. We'll tell you what's on Xbox, PS3, PC, and more. We'll chat about some random stuff to you rolling on the floor. This is One Up Gaming. Sit back and grab a drink. It's time to give a listen to what we have to think. Hi, and welcome to One Up Gaming. It's me, David. It's the One Up Game Podcast, episode 259, I think it is. So, I've been going a fair few years now. Um, so, I guess, please visit the website, oneupgaming.co.uk. Um, this week we are sponsored by our audio CD streamy thing. Um, the album is called Games Inspired Music, and on there there's like John Hare's Sensible Soccer Song. There's 26 tracks in total, and yeah, it, um, the vast majority of them were basically made for when we were doing our animated TV show. Um, we run into financial issues, and unfortunately, the person who was doing the lead voice. Accidentally stabbed someone and ended up getting arrested, and yeah, that kind of fell through. Um, unfortunately, yeah, in the couple of years since, out of nowhere, the guy got announced he had cancer, and two weeks later, he died. So, yeah, even after prison, we're never gonna get that one working, but we're here, we'll try, we'll do our little bits and bobs. <clears throat> so I guess for episode 259 I'll just go through a couple of bits that I've watched um, a few games that I've played and then we'll have a break then we'll come back and we will talk about some of the news from this week so first of all has to be said, has to be watched the new movie I think it's by James Gunn uh, DC uh, the Suicide Squad, and it's good. It is good. I do love what like James Gunn sort of does. It's like the stupid humour mixed with just throwaway gore. You know, it's just it's completely stupid, but it's funny. It flows. It sounds good. It looks good. So much better than the Black Widow movie that I watched a week before. Um, but yeah, this one I'd easily recommend. It's one of the funniest sort of movies. It it's one of those movies where like nothing really happens throughout the movie, but there's just bit bit bit, and it just keeps it all ticking away nicely and bright, colourful. It's stupid. Some of the characters are really funny. I still don't rate Harley Quinn as a character in a movie. This one is not too bad because she's not really front and centre, so she's just in the background. So she's not the annoying, voiced, clowny thing that she's been in a few of the other ones. But, yeah, some of the other guys. I mean, I, I still like Polka Dot. Polka Dot Man, I think he's funny. Um, <clears throat> Weasel, brilliant. The shark guy, he's funny. Um, but yeah, the, they're all good. They're all got little side stories of why they're there, what they're wanting to do, things like that. Um, so yeah, Suicide Squad, brilliant. The next one I watched was the Grand Tour Lockdown, and it's called Lockdown because it's, it's a pun on when we went into lockdown. I guess they filmed it last year. 
and it's set up in, in Scotland with like the lock with Loch Ness Monster. Um, but yeah, again, the the guys at the Grand Tour, <clears throat> they know what they're doing. They know how to bounce off each other. It's funny. I, I do love watching them. It's like an hour and a half of mayhem. And yeah, it's it's another good one. It's funny. So yeah, that's what I've been watching. So what I've been playing um, this week. I guess I'll just start off with Far Cry Primal. And what can I say about this game? It's unless it gets different a little bit further into the game. But from what I played, it was too serious for a Far Cry. Five for a Far Cry game, and it just didn't have the flow of a Far Cry game. I like the stupid humour, the way out there things, but yeah, I, I didn't give it too long. I, I got a bit bored of just chucking spirit spears. I can't speak today. Spears at animals, and yeah, it just didn't click, you know, it just didn't click with me, but, next up, Far Cry 4, now this one is a good game, I do love this one, I, for the first time ever, did the hidden easter egg cheat sort of thing, where, where, when you get into the game, you get sat down at a table, and the guy says, oh, just stay there, I'll be right back, and then normally it disappears, and it get it, your character, like, stands up, and, it, the game sort of says explore your surroundings and things like that. But if you basically just stand there for another 12, 15 minutes ish, then the guy comes back, says, Oh, thank you for staying. We'll take your mum's ashes to where you want it to go. And it, you can travel there, put her ashes down, get back in the car. Then it's, the titles come up for the game over. So you can complete the whole game in less than half an hour. So that's quite fun. Um, but no, the Far Cry 4 is when the, for me, is when the series became amazing. I do love Far Cry 5. That, I'm going to actually have a replay of that and put it back up on the YouTube channel. Thank you to Google for deleting my old YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, we'll get that put back up. Uh, next up was the Darksiders War Mastered. Now I love this game. But unfortunately, um, when I downloaded this one again, um, it actually had the, the error, the little problem with it, which was, it had like the audio of the explosion, but none of the audio of the talking. So it was really weird to not play. It was really cool. Still a good game, still fun to play. Everyone says it's like Zelda, but I don't think it's like Zelda. I think it's like a God of War with more action. It's not like Zelda. Dark Siders I like. Zelda I don't. So, yeah, Dark Siders is not Zelda. Next up, I only downloaded this because there was a report last week saying that it was getting taken off the, the Google Play Store and the iPhone Store, or the Apple Store, whatever you want to call it. And that was Dr. Mario World. Yes, I can tell why they're going to take this game off the stars. It is not a very good game. I honestly thought the old Mario, Dr. Mario games was like a Tetris, like a column sort of game where the blocks or the pills fell down the screen. This one they go up and it's just very complicated. <laughs> it messes with your head. But, yeah, so... It's not the best, but download it while you can and have a quick play. It's free to play, still making Nintendo a lot of money. Next up, um, Space Jam A New Legacy The Game. Now, I didn't have a clue this was even a thing until I was clicking around on the Xbox. And it's on the free to play sort of section, so it's a free to play download. It's an old school brawler, like side scrolling, beat em up. Similar to Streets of Rage, um, things like that, but it's just not the best. Yet yeah, it's free. Expectations limited. It's a good free game. I'll put it that way. 
Next up, I had a quick go at the Ascent, just because of all the hoo-ha over it over the last few days. And I will say, I am shocked at how hard this game is. I don't know if I've done something wrong or the game's not loading, but I got so far into the game, like 15 minutes, if that, and then the door said it was locked, and I've went all over the environment, and I can't find a key, I can't find anything to turn on, and I turned it off. Yeah, that's as far as I got. Um, my PC now, it's a little bit more RAM in it, so I tried Art of Rally again, and the game itself does load better, it plays a little bit better. So I had a quick go out of Rally, and that is a really good game. I'm actually looking forward to it on the Xbox when it comes out in a, about, is it end of this week, I think? Um, so when it does come out, I'll be downloading that and I'll play it on the Xbox and just wanting to see how smooth the game actually really should be. Um, the last game that I've had a quick go on this week was called No Longer Home, and this one's... Um, it's like an indie sort of game where it starts off as you and your roommate talking. It's like a interactive story narrative sort of book where you're just clicking on options to say, then you're talking, and there's a lot of reading involved. A lot of reading. I'm not a big reading fan. But then after about 10 minutes or so, it switches to like a very simple 3D isometric sort of view of the environment and you click on things like a point and click game and you click on things and it comes up with more information about what's happening and things so I guess the more you get into it the more it might pull you in um, because I didn't really have that much time I had a quick go on it and it seems fun not my sort of game I love the quick start and play arcadey like Sega Rally and some shoot 'em up, some fighting games, um, brawlers, things like that. Just pick up and play, no issues. They're my sort of games. I am going to mention that we got sent a game to review, and that was Synth Riders for the PSVR. And now this game, whew, it's amazing. Everyone remembers Beat Saber. This game, I guess, is similar to that. But instead of like blocks coming at you and you have to slash through the blocks, there's little tiny 3D orbs in the world and they sort of like the move up and down in a line. And as you are going towards the orbs, you have to have each hand like match where the orbs are in 3D space, so you're going up and down and moving it around. As the coming towards you, you have to dodge duck. And it is such a good game. It is probably one of the best VR, PSVR games I've played in so long. I believe the game came out a year ago on, I'm going to say, Oculus Rift. And it was on the Steam VR page two years ago. Or it might have been the other way around. But it's been out for a couple of years elsewhere. Came out again a year ago. And now it's finally come out for the PlayStation VR. Music's amazing. Graphics look so good. Pop amazingly well. It's like a futuristic retro Tron dance trance mesh up of amazingness. Really recommend it. Good game. Loads to download. It's just great. So that is what I've been playing this week. I will end it there. I will say thank you. We will have a quick break and then we'll be back with what what I've been. We'll be back with some news. So don't go too far. Back in a couple of minutes. Fly through space. Rescue cats. Score big points. Download Per Rocket for free today. Visit www.perrocket.com. And now it's this week's news with One Up Gaming. And we're back. It's me, David. It's One Up Gaming, episode 559. 259. 
five nine. <clears throat> Something like that. Anyway, yeah, quick break. I've been refreshed. I've had a sneaky coffee. Well, I'm still having a sneaky coffee. And so I guess we'll go with some news. And so, first of all, I mean, I've never used the service ever. But I was clicking around and I found out that up until September the 3rd, GOG, uh, good old games, whatever you want to call them now, but they are giving away Ultimate Underworld 1 and 2, Syndicate and Syndicate Wars. And they are free, basically like free until the September the 3rd. So, but yeah, if you use GOG or if you're interested in any of them games, then you can go along and sort of download those free of charge. So that is the first bit of news. Second one, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry, I'm not disappointed, um, not even upset, because I'm not that bothered. But <clears throat> I can see where they're coming from. But the Intellivision Amico has been delayed again for the third time now. They are saying that it will be out by the end of this year. We'll see. But I do like the look of it. The as a simple party kid sort of system. I do like the idea of it. I do like it. I wish I could see more of the Earthworm Jim sort of game that they announced. I wish I could see more of that. Um, other than that, I'm looking at a picture of it now, it's got like the wood effect on it, and oh god, it looks so nice. It does look good. It's very expensive for what it is. It's very expensive. I do like, I, I like the idea of it and everything. I think it's about, is it $250? Yeah. $250. So, yeah, it's expensive. It looks nice. It looks cool as hell, but... I don't know if it's worth that much money. I wonder if it'd be one of these machines that, after a few months, it might just drop down massively in price. Or it might sell through the numbers, not great, and then just die, and no one hears about them again. But, anyway. Moving on. And... I don't know if you can hear my PC in the background dying as the fans kick into life. Um, but <clears throat> So, 10 years after release, um, development on Kerbal Space Program has ended. Now, I thought it had been finished a few years ago because they were doing the um, Kerbal 2. Because that was announced at E3, but two or three years ago now. Um, but yeah, so... The studio will now focus on Kerbal Space Program 2, which is expected. It is really expected. Um, so it's basically saying that the new patch 1.12.2 has fixed over 90 bugs. Bugs? Bugs. Which, if it's been going for 10 years, why are there that many bugs still left in it? But anyway, I'm glad that. They've kept up with that game. They've kept it, like, all the development going on it. Next up. Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, <clears throat> Sonic the Hedgehog was... I, I think I went to see that in the cinema. And then I think I saw the... Oh, what the hell was it? The... The Marvel movie, which wasn't great. The New Mutants. So it wasn't the last movie I've seen in the cinema. But the Sonic movie was actually really good. It was funny, stupid. I loved it. Me, myself, I'm five. Um, but it looks as though Idris Elba will play Knuckles in the new Sonic movie. And he put up a... I was going to say a Facebook, but it was a tweet. 
with the knuckles, the echidna's glove with the spikes on, and he basically just put knock knock with Sonic Movie 2 knuckles. Um, anyone that knows um, the actual Dreamcast game, uh, I think it was like Sonic Adventure 2 or Sonic Adventure, one of them, where the knuckles, it did actually have the, the knock knock sort of like in the lyrics and stuff. Um, but anyway, I'm really excited to see this. It looks as though Jim Carrey and James Marsden are back. So it, it as long as it's as fun as the first one, I, I loved the first one. It was so funny. Uh, next up, it's not really news, but I wanted to add this into the sort of section of the podcast of the video because I thought this was amazing when I saw this. And this was one of the wildest ways to hack your console. And this was the Xbox 360, the slim sort of version. Whereas Microsoft, when they made it, um, they knew that you could get into the circuitry of the chips. So they actually encased them in like a hard resin plastic sort of shell. So they put the, like the processor chip or whatever it was in then they actually melted the resin over it so it's solid, it like hardened solid and then you had like a see through clear layer over the top of the process so you couldn't get into it but I don't know how the hell it, they all worked out, it's weird as hell but people worked out that after scanning them with like x-rays or something stupid that the two wires that you needed cross sections in the underneath the actual processor and if you had a, a steady hand you could get a little drill and drill a tiny little hole through it and it actually cut through those wires once those wires were cut you could then put on your own custom firmware on the actual BIOS or the chips whatever you want to and that's how you could hack and play backup games and things like that on your old Xbox 360 and I watched a little video of it, like a 20 minute video, and oh my god, it was mind-blowing how, one, it was discovered, and two, the depth people would be willing to go through to do these sort of things. But, yeah, it's just amazing. Next up, now the game I didn't quite enjoy as much, but The Ascent, um, some people have been hacking away at it and they've removed the it's like an overhead isometric sort of view shooter so a top down slightly angled view sort of 3D shooter, twin stick shooter and some developer or some person has gone in tweaks it, the camera to have it like as if it's like a first person sort of level camera going around the game and it looks as good, if not better, than some first-person shooter sort of games. The detail, the everything that's there, it just looks amazing. Um, it's, you know, it's nothing really of value, but it just goes to show that, although it's a top-down sort of shooter, the amount of detail and the effort they have to put into the game itself is still astonishing. Um, moving swiftly on. So the developers at Turn 10 are saying... Actually, it won't be Turn 10, will it? be Playground Games. They're saying that Forza Horizon 5's open world is one and a half times larger than the last game. And it's way more di- di- diverse. Diverse? Diverse. So hopefully that means that bigger area, more to do, more to see... And that is what you want in a game. You want more. You just want more. The graphics look amazing. The environment looks absolutely stunning. The cars look good. So what more can you want? The... Is it September when it comes out? I can't remember. It can't be September because that's blimmin' soon, isn't it? Um... I can't see 
Now I can't see when the release date is on the news post, but it's looking soon. It's looking great. Can't wait to play it. I love the Forza games. So next up, and I'm a bit disappointed with I think it's Kotaku, as they've got the Commodore Amiga gets a mini version, which is technically right, but it's not because the the guys who make the the mini. Even like the Commodore 64 sort of mini, they can't have the rights to the name Commodore. So that was just the C64 mini. And I think this is going to be the A500 mini. Because they can't say Commodore or Amiga. So it's just the A500 mini. But it looks cute as a, it looks cute. Cute as hell. I believe that you can put uh, SD cards in with your own ROMs. Um, you can plug in a USB keyboard to type uh, for games that you need a keyboard. It comes with a USB mouse and a little USB gamepad, which is... It might have been for the Amiga 1200, but I remember it more for the the Commodore Amiga CD, I think it was. Um, but anyway, the it looks quite cool. Hopefully it'll work with the the little USB joysticks that used to be so prevalent back in those early 90s sort of computer days. It comes with a few games. It says only 25 games, which is weird, because that's not many when you think of the size of these games. But it looks like it's including, but they haven't sort of like said fully what these what will be available. But they've announced Alien Breed 3D, Another World... Um, which I guess American guys that'll be out of this world All Terrain Racing Battle Chess Cadavere never heard of Kickoff 2 Pinball Dreams Simon the Sorceress Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe The Chaos Engine Worms The Director's Cut and Zul Ninja of the Nymph Dimension Hopefully they'll get Codemasters involved because they own the Sensible Software stuff so Sensible Soccer, Cannon Fogger Fogger? Cannon Fodder Megalomania, all those sort of games was Megalomania on the Amiga? No idea but I know Cannon Fodder was in Sensible Soccer get those games on it or just get them downloaded um, via a USB so it looks as though the machine's going to be about $130, £120 that sort of price and it comes out early next year. So yeah, that looks cool as beans. So next up, we have, finally, we have something new to say about the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now, the only thing that's been announced, which was announced four years ago now, was that it's been made by the same team that do the Minions movies, and it's going to, going to be animated. Um, but today... <clears throat> I'm going to get the name wrong and I do apologise the comedian uh, Sebastian Maniscalco Maniscalco Sebastian was asked what he's up to with the rest of his day during an interview and he basically sort of said that he casually dropped that he's going to go and do some work on the Mario movie which is playing the role of Spike, their boss. So, yeah. No idea. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. So, again, because of COVID, and I do know that Australia, because they, I think they're the only ones so far to cancel the Formula One from attending Australia. Um, but it looks like PAX Australia has been cancelled and they'll be replacing it with an online show so I mean not a lot else you can really say but it's just like due to global policies barring any physical events for the rest of 2021 so yeah next up Xbox consoles are getting a night mode to help with tired eyes it looks as though it just dims the whole screen down. It looks like it's changes to like the old Xbox sort of thing, where it's like a green, so it's not bright. So all the writing's green, and it you can 
lower the you can turn off HDR you can turn off the LED brightness of the controller turn off the Xbox power button itself things like that just to help dim everything down that's in early access at the minute but hopefully that'll be coming like right it'll be coming soon so night mode for the Xbox so it's saying here the new to Xbox Game Pass for August. Um, get the hands on Hades, 12 minutes, Psychonauts 2. Blah, 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 blah. So, Dead Gods, Dodgeball, Academia, Kat- 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 Katamari, Dama. Gamma C, Reroll, oh god. Star Mesa. Yeah, so they're all coming this month to Xbox Game Pass. I love the Game Pass, it's amazing. It gives you a chance to, even if you're not really interested in the game, you can just download it and give it a quick 10 20 minute little go just so you can get a taste of the actual game itself. And. Still moving in with moving in moving on with the Activision Blizzard for, fallout from a couple of weeks ago, a month ago now maybe. It looks as though three senior Blizzard developers are no longer with the company. So it looks as though Diablo 4 director Louis Barriga, lead designer Jesse McCree. WoW designer Jonathan LeCroft are no longer with the company. Um, so I don't know if that's just because they've been reportedly reported, reportedly reported. They've been reported for something, and the Activision have basically said, "Look, guys, it looks better for you if you walk out now rather than go through all the courts and procedures and stuff." Um, so if you leave now, you might be able to get a job elsewhere, but we don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Other than that, so that is basically the news for this week. Um, there was one which I've completely missed, and that one was... There was news that there was someone else that had been... I think it was someone else from the Activision. I'll see if I can quickly find what it was. Um, Because it was the Eurogamer. I've got a Eurogamer. First of all, I love the fact that the BBC Sport showed a tour of the Olympic Stadium. Um, where they actually used a full Unreal Engine Studio, full. It looked amazing. I really did like it. Um, ah, um, a high-profile Apex Legends developer has been fired after offensive blogs surfaced. So, someone else has been fired from games, and it's amazing. It really is amazing. Um, so, I'll just quickly go to, I mean, like, I've got the top 40 sort of games here. I'll read through some of the names. So, Mass Effect Legendary Edition at 40. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Orders at 39. That's still there. That's not bad. FIFA 21, 37. I'll just read through some games that I'm surprised at. The um, new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. That's amazing, that's in there. Mortal Kombat 11, 28. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons, 24. Red Dead Redemption 2 at 23. Oh god, Plants vs Zombies Battle for the Neighborville. That's at 22, that's amazing. Just Dance 21 at 21. Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey at 20. Can't believe that's still going. Um, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Ring Fit Adventure still going strong at 16. The Harry Potter Collection at 14. Mario Golf Super Rush, a bit disappointing at 12. 
The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, amazingly still in there, almost at the top 10 at 11. Marvel's Avengers, which I thought was doing really poor, but it's still in the top 10. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, number 9. Assassin's Creed Van Halle, bloody hell, still going up there. 8. As- Grand Theft Auto 5, amazingly at 7. Minecraft, bloody hell, at 6. Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword at 5. Animal Crossing New Horizons at 4. And now, a game which I think is actually really fun. Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, the official video game at number 3. Amazingly, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 2. And F1 21. Looks weird it's saying Electronic Arts published it, but that's at number 1. So, that is everything this week so before we go please visit our website which is oneupgaming.co.uk please um, help us out with Patreon which is patreon.com slash O-U-G oh yes the fans sort of sli- slightly died down now we have cups and t-shirts at bluecyborg.com is it t-shirts at there? can't remember now anyway bluecyborg.com search One Up Gaming and you'll find something our album, Games Inspired Music, is available now to stream, to buy. 20% of all sales will go to the Child's Play charity. And we can, we can, <clears throat> and you can get, unfortunately, if you want, the first 100 podcasts from audiobooksontape.com. And that's £9, and £1 of that will go to the Diabetes UK charity. On our website, please use the Amazon links. It just takes you straight to Amazon, buy what you're buying, and then we get a little bit of money back from Amazon for advertising Amazon. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, just search One Up Gaming. Our YouTube channel is the one that's only got like two subscribers now because our old channel got deleted. So please, if you're watching this, subscribe, um, pass it on to as many people as you can. We need to get these numbers up, please. I'm desperate, I'm begging, I'm begging. Uh, we're on Twitch, so twitch.tv slash O-U-G official. If you want to tweet us, it's at O-U-G official. And if you want to email us, it's contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. So please, subscribe to us. Um, yeah, more subscribers on the podcast, more subscribers on the YouTube. Uh, follow us on Facebook, follow us on um, Twitter, that kind of thing. Helps with all the people finding us. Um, subscribe to us, give positive feedback, give us five stars, all that sort of McGubbins. And yeah, One Up Gaming, episode 259. David speaking. Thank you. Goodbye. It's 10 minutes of nothing. Yeah, 10 minutes of nothing. Hi, just David here from One Up Gaming. Have we got a prize giveaway for you guys? Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need as many subscribers as we can. Our old channel got deleted. Thanks, Google. And so we're starting afresh. And we need as many subscribers as possible. Please subscribe to the channel. uh, Forward it on to your friends, family, that sort of thing. And then go on to our Twitter, which is at OUG Official. And just sort of like tweet, subscribe, something like that. And then we'll go on to the Twitter and that's where we work out where we're giving away these prizes. So, we've got three prizes to give away. So, first of all, it is that, which is the Bitmap Brothers Universe book. Nice, thick book. Unopened, unread, unused. Completely free. Just subscribe to the YouTube channel and we can sort of like give that away to someone. Next up, we have the Sega Dreamcast Collected Works by Read Only Memory. Again, still sealed, still not used, brand new. Subscribe, send us a message on Twitter and you get the chance to win the, that one of them two books. Lastly, we have Britsoft, an oral history, 
And basically, from what I can gather, this one has loads of stories that they used from the bedrooms to billions. So, a little documentary. So, again, completely unopened. Looks to have nice bits and bobs in there. Got, like, bits from Dean Ardini, um, Jeff Minter, Archie McLean, um, Peter Molyneux, uh, the guy who created Grand Theft Auto, David Barbon. And I'm sure it's got John Hare in there for the Sensible Software fame. So please, followers, subscribers, send us a message on Twitter. Thank you. David out. Do you have trouble sleeping? Tossing and turning all night. Nothing you do seems to help. You're not getting your recommended six to eight hours of sleep each night. Well, now there's a solution. Now there's Fat Cat Fly. With Fat Cat Fly, you'll easily get the sleep that you deserve. Download for free on the iOS App Store, and you're guaranteed to get a good night's sleep with very few side effects, as you help a fluffy kitty eat all the junk food that he wants. Side effects may include sleepless system, desire for cheeseburgers, if erection lasts more than five hours, see a physician. Try Fat Cat Fly today. Visit facebook.com slash fatcatfly, because you deserve a better life. Hey guys. Justin here. I just wanted to say that I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you a lot. Yes, you in particular, in that way. And I wanted to say, I think you're great. I've always said that about you. And I was wondering, if you think we're great, if you could give us a quick rating on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it. It would really, really help us out in that, you know, podcasty sort of way. And if you're feeling particularly festive, perhaps even a little saucy, Maybe stop by our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G and see if you can't slip a few bucks our way. After all, every little penny or whatever space money they use in Europe helps out the show. Thanks for listening. O-U-G Gaming will always be free, but with your support, we can always move forward and always be better. Go baby, go baby, go baby. I love you, say I love you. Never put nothing above you. Won't let go once I can hug you on the floor. They hate because you let them know that you the ish. Now they hate and I because you at the club and proving it. And so they choosing it too late because now they using it. Can't wait from how you doing it. I know that they pursuing it. You will kindly tell them now my baby's here to watch me go. And for him, I put on a show. You just blessed to be here. So, uh, my baby goes, goes, uh, my body rolls, rolls, uh, uh, I tell her, hold on, hold on, we can look close, we close, uh, on. been on it so long, so long. I think we gotta, we gotta go, go. Get my grown man, uh, get it. you know that I love you, I so love it. Oh, so bad, she can get it so bad that she loves me no 
bad. I'ma hug it so sad. sad. You looking so, so mad. mad. Oh, you didn't know that. Didn't Next know. time you should check the right. ring. I know that one's a throwback. I know you see her flashing it, especially when she they gets it long. I'm rubbing on and grabbing it. I tell my girl, go, go ahead and go.